All right, Corey from Stats Pegasus here, and today I want to show how you can deploy your Django applications to a virtual private server using Docker and Kamal in just a few minutes. So I'm going to go through the SAS Pegasus Kamal uh, documentation and walk through this, showing how you can deploy a SAS Pegasus application to your own private server. But uh, if you aren't using SAS Pegasus, you can also just follow these instructions and I will link to a guide that has some of the config files that you will need. Okay, so basically we're gonna need a server, we're gonna need a domain, we're gonna need a Docker registry, and then we're gonna need a development environment where we're gonna do our work. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is set up my server. I'm going to use Hetzner for this. I've been hosting my projects on Hetzner recently and I've been enjoying it. They are incredibly competitively priced and uh, seem quite reliable. So I'm in my Hetzner dashboard here and I'm going to create a server for this demo. Um, I will host it in the US out of habits. I'm gonna choose Ubuntu 24 for my operating system x86 architecture and then i'm just going to pick this cheapest option with two gigs of ram at four euros a month and i do need a public ip i will uh, have a built-in ssh key uh, so i can just log into that server without a password and i don't need to add any of this stuff ordinarily if i was doing this for production i would add backups uh, because your database is going to be stored on the server as well uh, since this is just a demo app that I'm going to throw away, I will not add any of those. I will give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it Kamal2 since uh, this demo is with Kamal2, which was just released uh, a month or so ago. And I'm just going to click Create and Buy now. And this is going to uh, set up my server with DigitalOcean. It's going to provision everything. It's really, really fast, actually. And let's see if I can just log into this server at this IP address now. Um, so I'm gonna copy that, and I'm just going to go here to my command line, and I'm just going to do sh roots at that IP, accept that, and I am in. So yeah, so that's how quickly you can get spun up. The reason I was able to log in without a password is because of that SSH, SSH key that I added. And we are good to go. Now, I do not actually have to run any other setup steps on the server. Um, Kamal will handle installation of everything that we need and our entire application, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's go back to the instructions. We've got our server. Now we need to set up DNS, I manage my DNS in Cloudflare, so I am going to create a new record for this server. Once again, I'm gonna use the name kamal2.saspegasus.com uh, and I'm just going to uh, use that same IP address that we got from here. Um, I will not proxy it to start. You will be able to proxy it um, eventually, but just I find if anything goes wrong, turning off Cloudflare's proxy feature to start. Um, it makes things a little bit easier to troubleshoot if you run into any issues. So I'm just going to set that DNS endpoint. Um, that will take a minute to propagate. While that's propagating, we can move on to the next step of the guide, which is to create our image repository. So the image repository is where um, we are going to store our Docker images that get built, um, which will be then pulled and run in our Kamal environments. I will use Docker Hub for this. I um, I have switched to Amazon ECR, which is uh, much more cost effective than Docker Hub. However, it's uh, like Amazon. It's kind of you know really complicated and a little bit annoying to set up. So I'm not going to demo that. I'm going to demo Docker Hub, which does give you one free private repository, which is all we need for the purposes of this demo. So let's call this again, Kamal2. We're gonna make it private, and then we are going to create it. So this repository exists now. And let's go back to here. And so I've already got Kamal 
set up on my computer, so I'm not going to show the process of installing it. So you should just be able to gem install Kamal if you're working on a Mac or Linux environment. Otherwise, you can also install it from Docker uh, and get that up and running there. So next, we are going to create our secrets file. So previous versions of Kamal used a .env file that has uh, been moved to this .kamal secrets file. So I am going to create that file by taking the uh, secrets.example file and moving it to Kamal secrets. And then I am going to update my configuration file. So in the clear, in my deploy.yaml file, which is where Kamal configures most of what it needs to do. And let me just make this a little bit bigger. Um, so here I need to configure a few things. So the first thing I need to do is update this image to the uh, details that were created here, which will be Sisu Kamal 2. Um, I'm just going to close these now that I'm not using them. The next thing I'm going to do is, um, let's see, update my username in my Docker registry. So let's go there to user, username Sisu. The password is going to be Kamal registry password, which I am going to have to set in that secrets file in a moment. Um, next, we need to replace all instances of this IP address field with, uh, with the IP of our server. Which, so we're going to search for that, and we're going to paste in this. And we can just replace five instances of that. So this will now tell Kamal where we are going to be deploying. Um, and app domain. So an allowed hosts, we want kamal pegasuscom And here also we want kamal pegasuscom There you can see cursor doing its thing. Um, OK, so in our secrets file now, we are going to modify a few things. So we are going to set our registry password, which is my actual registry password. So I'm not going to do that just yet. We're going to set a Postgres password, which I'll just say like secret password. I'm going to throw away the server as soon as this demo finishes. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. Uh, I will also use that same secret password here. And for a Django secret key, I don't know, you can just kind of um, mash on the keyboard a bit um, or use a Better off to use like a cryptographic thing to generate a nice long random secret key for your Django projects, but again, this doesn't really matter uh, in this case. Um, okay, so now we need to set our Kamal registry password, which um, I forgot to actually generate an access token, so let me do that step, which uh, my account security. So I will go to, let's see, maybe account settings. I feel like they change this UI every time I use it. Security, personal access tokens. So I'm going to generate a new token, and I'm not even going to bother hiding it because I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to deprecate all this stuff as soon as, as soon as I finish recording here. So come all to screencast, we'll call that. Um, Let's see. We'll give it. A, we'll give it read and write. I don't know if it needs. I don't actually know if it needs write, but um, that's fine. And we're just going to copy that in there to tell Kamal how to get our images. And oh, it does need write because it needs to um, write our images from our dev machine and pull them in from our production machine. So. We have set the password, the Postgres password, the secret key, the database URL. I think that means we are good to go. So I am going to just run Kamal Setup. And Kamal Setup will do its thing now, which means it's going to log into that server. 
It's going to install Docker, which you can see it's doing right there. It's going to then build our Docker container for our application locally. And assuming that all goes well, it will push it to our Docker registry. It will um, then pull it back down onto our production server and spin up our app, our database, our cache, our Celery worker and our proxy run some health checks and uh, set up SSL and deploy. So it's going to cruise through that. I will speed this up a little bit in post and let it do its let it do its thing. You can see it's now building our containers, and this will take maybe just one or two minutes. Um, I'll speed it up so that you don't have to sit and watch and come back when it's done. All right, so it looks like that finished, although it did not complete successfully. What I believe happened is that the uh, health checks were running while the migrations were running, which meant that the um, health checks failed and Kamal decided to abort instead of just waiting longer for the health checks. So I'm just gonna run uh, Kamal at boot, which should basically redo the deploy without building all the Docker containers, but just kind of try to start it up again. Let's see if that works. All right, it looks like that one did complete successfully. So now we should be able to go to kamal2.sas.pegasus.com. And with any luck, we will have, fingers crossed, yeah, our site is online. We can probably uh, create an account just to prove that the database is also working. And yeah, so now we've got a production application deployed to Hetzner VPS for like four year or a month. We can actually deploy multiple applications to this server if we want. Um, and yeah, what did that take, like 10 minutes? Yeah, so Kamal is really cool. If you watched one of the last videos where I've done this, you'll note that this process is much smoother and easier than it has been in the past. So I'm pretty happy with this, and I hope that this is helpful and helps you to deploy your own applications. I did mention that I have a blog on this um, where you can see the SAS Pegasus Docker file as well as a full Kamal deployment configuration that I use for my own projects. Um, there are a couple quirks that I ran into while I was setting this up. So I recommend you check that out, specifically the um, some Django security features kind of don't play nice with how health checks work. Um, but anyway, I'll link to this in the video description. You can check that out uh, to get access to these files and uh, more of the configuration in detail. So that's it. Good luck deploying your Django apps and I will see you next time.